Go into a science or engineering laboratory, close your eyes, and listen. In a biomedical lab, you might hear an ultracentrifuge spinning up as it separates the components of a sample. In a chemical analysis lab, you might hear the whine of a turbine pump as it evacuates the chamber of a mass spectrometer. In a missile propulsion research facility, you might hear the aggressive white noise from a test burn of a potential new jet fuel. In each setting, you can hear a sonic fingerprint of what goes on there. Welcome back to Sounds of Innovation, an intermittent feature of our Voices from DARPA podcast. My name is Ivan Amato, and I'm your DARPA host. Rather than hearing the voices of program managers, which is normally what you get in a Voices from DARPA podcast, in each Sounds of Innovation episode, you will hear some of the soundscapes of research and development and learn just a little bit about what new capabilities those sounds could lead to. In this episode, we feature sounds harvested from research efforts under the wings of Ann Fisher, a program manager in the agency's Defense Sciences Office, and Stacy Williams, who finished her tour of duty as a program manager in the Tactical Technology Office at the end of January. Let's get right to it with a sound of innovation that Stacy sent my way. Each one of those snapping sounds comes from a laser pulse as it smashes into the surface of a thin aluminum plate. It's just one element of a multifaceted investigation DARPA is sponsoring to understand, characterize, and ultimately better defend against lasers used in the battlefield. This staccato clip captures a few moments of a study which is measuring how laser light scatters from different media that might be present in a battle situation. An improved understanding of such scattering phenomena should open doors to new protective and defensive systems that can detect and monitor, in real time, adversarial use of high-energy lasers, either for targeting military assets or directly attacking warfighters. The sound clip comes our way from laser scattering field tests conducted by Dr. Richard Preston and colleagues with Sensing Strategies Incorporated in Pennington, New Jersey. Now I would like to treat you to a medley of laboratory sounds that program manager Ann Fisher sent to me. Given where these sounds are coming from, it would be defensible to say they depict advanced technologies that literally transform our world on some of its most elemental levels. The medley goes on for close to a minute. Those were sonic snippets of the future of chemistry emerging from the laboratory of Lee Cronin at the University of Glasgow. His group is working for Ann Fisher under a research contract with her Make It program, as well as her Accelerated Molecular Discovery program. Together, these programs aim to expand access to the vast diversity of molecules that could be technologically useful, but that we might not know about yet or have yet to figure out how to make efficiently and cheaply. To further these causes, the Cronin group is building digital chemistry systems. They call these digital chemical state machines, or less formally, computers. These combine artificial intelligence, novel molecule making algorithms, and automated synthesis machinery into systems that by themselves plan out and execute optimized sequences of chemical reactions and procedures to yield valuable new molecules, including drugs for treating COVID-19 patients, new antibiotic candidates, and new pain medications, to name but a few. The five computer sound snippets you heard correspond to a chiller turning on for cooling a chemical reaction into purify a chemical, a digital syringe pump for moving chemicals around, the backbone for the Cronin team's computer, a chromatography fraction sampler for identifying chemical constituents, and finally, a mechanical component that lifts a rotary evaporator, or rotovap, and a heating bath into place for concentrating a solution and isolating the products of a chemical reaction before finer purification. We will close out this episode with a Sound of Innovation clip I saved until last because it has a bit of that run-from-the-room quality to it, and I wanted you to stay with me until the end.
What you just heard are detections of photons as they hit an ultra-sensitive optical detector in the laboratory of Jonathan Habif at the University of Southern California. These detection events happen on a nanosecond timescale, so the USC team adjusted the sampling frequency of the events to the much slower audio range so that we can hear them rather than just see them on laboratory instrumentation. At first, before the researchers turn on their laser, only dim background light is observed. That's why the detections of photons are sparse and the audio ticks are low. When the researchers flick on the laser, the detection rate skyrockets. That's when the sound resembles a phonograph needle scratching across an old vinyl record. The sound calms down again once the laser is turned off and all that is left is dim background light. Habib's team collects data like this as it develops novel ways to detect laser light even amidst daytime background lighting. Like the first clip you heard in this Sounds of Innovation episode, this last one comes from research overseen by former program manager Stacy Williams. She's hoping this research will help prepare our warfighters for a future in which laser weapons are ever more present in the battlefield. There now are few effective options for detecting, characterizing, and locating sources of high-energy laser weapons, yet that's just the kind of tactical data our warfighters need to effectively and responsibly deploy countermeasures. Thanks for listening to this episode of DARPA's Sounds of Innovation series. We will be posting more episodes in the series intermittently as a feature of the Voices from DARPA podcast. Thanks also to Ben Sullivan for his partnership in producing the program. For more information about the programs whose sounds you just heard, as well as about other breakthrough technologies DARPA is working on, visit DARPA.mil. And for links that enable you to download this podcast, go to the Voices from DARPA page on DARPA's website.